Daniel Woodgate with UJ Sports Network alongside me. I've got Grant Dennis who's fighting on June the 4th on the Moat Park Ledger Centre show, uh, show with J Sports Network Promotions. How are you doing, Grant? Yeah, I'm wicked, mate. Yeah, feeling good. Nice and relaxed. Training's going great. Um, yeah, I'm always prepared to go in there and fight. So, um, five weeks' time, I'm going to be um, at my tip top. Yeah, like you say, you're always prepared. You, you do genuinely keep yourself in shape all the time. Yeah. Um, you are just coming back from an injury. Do you want to speak yeah. about that a little bit? Yeah, um, I, I busted my ankle um, before the last my last fight, actually. And, um, yeah, it put me back a few weeks and that. But to be fair, I broke, I broke my ankle on the, on the Sunday and I was back in the gym on, on the Tuesday, still sitting down doing my stuff, you know what I mean? So I didn't stay at the gym. I, st I stayed fit and at a reasonable level of fitness. And, um, yeah, I'm back on it. The, um, the injury's healed up nice. And, um, yeah, I'm back to where I was, 100% fit. Yeah, like you say, they, I, that's what I was going to touch on. You, um, I see that you broke your ankle on the Sunday, and then I see the video post up on like, the Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever I see it yeah. on Facebook, of you punching the bag, sitting in a chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I, I had a day of feeling sorry for myself, and I thought, yeah, forget that. Um, let's get back to the gym. I can still sit down and punch a bag and do other little things, floor exercises, ab work, core work. So I thought I'd just get back on it and, um, yeah, not feel sorry for myself, really. So yeah, so about? you're not one of these fighters like um, some fighters do. They sort of have their fight and then balloon up in weight and, and end up going on, on the lash for however many weeks, months. No, nah, absolutely not. To be fair, I'm too vain for that. Um, <laughs> I'm too vain for it. I like to keep a six-pack and all that stuff. Bro. Um, yeah, um, I like to maintain a level of fitness. I go out after my fight. I might eat something, a little crap, but... Um, one or two days I'm back in the gym, I'm back working on stuff because even though I've, I've, I've not been beaten, I don't look to be beaten ever, do you know what I mean? I've always looked at my fights and think I can improve on something. So as soon as I see something that I think, right, I could have um, done that better or this better, me and my team, me and Veron, um, we go straight back in the gym and we work on it. We talk about what we could have improved on, not what we've done well, what we could have done better. And um, yeah, that's how um, we progress forward. That's it. You are you are genuinely a good example of what kids should be looking up to, and how you should be living the life of boxing, and 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 actually taking it seriously rather than just doing it as a as a, as a side thing. Yeah, absolutely. For, for me, it's it's what I want to. Um, it's like Picasso with with painting a picture. He wanted to paint that picture, and that picture. He, other people might look at it and think, "Oh, yeah, that's the finished article." For Picasso, that weren't the finished article, and I'm the same. I don't. I'm never going to be the finished article, even long after. For me, I, I win the world title. I, I, that's still not the finished title call to me. I feel that I can always improve and strive to be better in no matter what I do. And after boxing's completed and, and my career's over and my next career starts, I'll be exactly the same. And I, I tell my children the same thing. I go, it doesn't matter what you are or what you want to become, just strive to be the best that you can be. And that's, that's, um, that's what I try and put out there. Bit of philosophy there. Try to. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, Obviously, your next fight is, uh, is it another title fight? Yeah, it's for the International Classic. I've, um, last time out, I won that, um, the British Classic against Wayne Reid. Tough guy. Good, good fight that was. Um, it was a very good fight, yeah. Yeah, good learning fight for me as well. And um, yeah, I won the, the, the British <laughs> version of it. So I'm going for the International version now against um, a guy called Jambalog from the Czech Republic. Uh, tough, tough little southpaw. So he's going to come and he's going to yeah, try, and, try and do his stuff. But like I say, um, we've always got the remedy for um, any opponent that is put in front of us. Yeah, like you say, you, you fought Wayne Reid, uh, which would have been your last fight now. Yeah, that was my last fight, yeah. For, for the title. Um, obviously, looking at such a big step up so early in your career, mm. I was along with many people talking whether it was the right step to make. You was always 100% confident, but obviously questions were asked by many people. Yeah. And uh, you went in the ring and... and and you answered them in a, in a big way. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, no matter no matter what, them questions are always going to be asked when you're stepping up and stepping up where I want to be. You know what I mean? So I knew that Wayne Reed was a, was a tough opponent. He'd been in there with um, the likes of Jermaine Smile, the super middleweight English champion, um, and knocked him out. He'd been in there with a few a few guys and um, stopped him. I knew he had punch power, but I just felt I looked. At, we looked at him, and I just. I'm always confident in my ability anyway, and the sparring I get and et cetera, the training I put in, and I just, I just felt that I always had his number and I could go in there and um, beat him and look good doing so, and I felt like I did. Yeah, I think 
you, you touched on your, you're confident in your ability. I think everyone's pretty confident in your ability. I think the main thing, main question with that fight was the the mental aspect. How are you going to deal with that? And and like I say, you you dealt with it perfect. It was absolutely brilliant performance. And unfortunately, you had to miss your last fight. I was really looking forward to seeing you get in there again. But <coughs> sorry, you got this next fight coming up um, for the international classic. Yeah. And then we was talking earlier about your next move after that. Yeah, well, um, next move, to be fair, I wanted to fight for, um, me and my team wanted to fight for the Southern Area title. Nick Genman won the Southern Area title. I think it was back in May, um, when was it? March time, February time. And um, he's got a voluntary defence. And um, it was put to us that we could actually approach his team to um, get that voluntary for us to go in for that fight. And um, his team didn't want to know. I totally understand why they wouldn't want to volunteer to fight me. So obviously, I am a, and can do what I can do. I totally understand that. I've got no problems with Nick. He's just got a belt that I want. And um, me and my team are trying to get that fight, but they didn't want to have none of it. They didn't want to, they didn't want to fight me. So um, that's that. So next step was the international. And then from the, hopefully, I become mandatory for the southern area. And then Nick Gemman ain't got no choice. So Nick Gemman's on your radar. Nick, Nick Gemman, obviously, <clears throat> we all know about Nick Gemman. He's, yeah, he's yeah. a very good fighter. Yeah. Um, and... Even after Wayne, Wayne Reed, he's going to be a big step up. Yeah, yeah. You're obviously 100% confident you're ready for that step. 100%. 100%. Um, I can't see what Nick could bring to the table that I couldn't deal with, to be honest. And um, It would make a very entertaining fight. Uh, like We asked to even go in his back garden and, and fight him there in Brighton. I wouldn't mind. Do you know what I mean? Um, it'd make a great fight for the fans. He does lots of tickets. I would do lots of tickets. And um, the, the venue would be buzzing. Do you know what I mean? And it, it just makes sense. So um, hopefully, in the near future, me and Nick can get that on. Yeah, I think you're right there. It's, it's, that is genuinely a really intriguing fight. Something that, yeah. that I think is going to bring a lot of um, neutral fans as well. Yeah. Um, anyone interested in boxing is probably going to be interested in that fight. Nick Gemman's obviously done well. Yeah. I remember um, I, I used to train with, with Nick yeah. when he first turned pro. And he's come a long, long way since then. And he's improved a lot. Um, He's been travelling around doing sparring. And, yeah, and I, I, I can see that he trains quite hard, you know what I'm saying? And uh, to be fair, I've even had conversations with, with Nick and stuff like um, via Facebook, via um, just being out at a boxing show or whatnot. He's not a bad lad, but um, he's got Southern Area title and that's the direction me and my team want to go. We want to go Southern Area, English, British, Commonwealth, world. And that, that is my true ambition in boxing. I, I'm not going to settle here, do you know what I mean? I've, I truly believe I can get to that world stage because that's the, that's the mindset and the drive I've got behind me. That's it, and that's, that's the way you've got to look at it as well. You, yeah. you, you want to push on and, and, and really make a, make a career out of boxing. You have to aim for the top, that's the only way. Absolutely, Dan, absolutely. So, after um, this next fight, you're obviously looking at the southern area yeah. and you, you talked about moving on to, to bigger honours after that. Yeah, how, how much work do you think you need to before you get to, say, a British level? Do you think you're almost there? or I think I'm touching that level. I think I'm touching that level. Obviously, time will tell, and um, I get the right sparring in all the time. I'm sparring very, very... I'm, I spar the British champion all the time, do you know what I'm saying? And, and it's very good sparring. I spar, um, just last week, um, Lee Markham, who's fighting for the English title. Very good spar. I spar these guys constantly. So, at the moment, this time in my career, my sparring's harder on paper than my fights, do you know, and that's how it should be, really, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I believe that I'm touching that level already, but I've got to get more experience. I'm only five fights deep. I'm realistic. I've got to get the experience. I've got to get more fights in, um, show the British Boxing Board of Control that I'm ready for that kind of step up. And then, um, yeah, like I say, then it'd be all go, all go. You mentioned earlier your trainer, Veron, uh, and obviously I know you, you want to say thanks to him, yeah. but uh, is there anyone else you'd really like to thank? Yeah, my trainer, Veron, obviously. My, my brother, Jordan, who's um, always in the gym with me. He's hopefully going to turn pro by the end of the year. Um, my boy, Slick Evans, who's always doing my pad work with me as well, does body bag spy with me, pushes me through my sprints, up early with me in the mornings. And, uh, he's a great trainer himself, and he's just... Um, He's hopefully going to get his pro licence as a trainer soon. And my sponsor, Viderco Solutions, who's just sponsored me, really helping out with my sponsorship. And, um, yeah, I'd like to thank that company very much. So, um, yeah, them guys there. Hopefully ain't missed no one out. My boy Roach. Everyone. Everyone, everyone knows who they are and who supports me. And um, Joe Alfie, my manager, of course, who's um, guiding my career really well. 
and um, we're on to a winning thing. Trust me, he knows when he's got money. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Well, what's the best place to get in t- contact with you for tickets? Yeah, you can get in contact with me um, via Facebook, Grant Dennis, or Twitter, at Go Get A Dennis. Um, get me on Snapchat, Grant Dennis again, and to watch all my videos, my training things. Um, I up- update you with information and news. Um, yeah, so get me via there and get tickets for this fight, because... I'm not looking for it to go the distance. I'm going to go out there. I want to make a big, big statement this fight and um, get on to the next one. Well, there you go. Grant Dennis, future Southern area, British, European and world champ and modern day Picasso. I'm Daniel Woodgate, Jay's Sports Network. Thank you very much.